and then I ended up losing round five because of my own misplay. Also, got, you got to reflect on that as well. That round was on me. There was a winning line. It wasn't super obvious. It wasn't like a super terrible misplay or anything. But after all, if I had been playing my A game, I probably would have won the round. It's an interesting spot to look at, actually. I think I might do that on stream this week as like a little, a little quiz for chat, you know, because it wasn't a very interesting spot. And at the time, I didn't figure out the, the winning line right away, and I lost because of it. But a couple minutes after the round, I realized I could have won, and I was I was pretty disappointed. Anyways, Chad, who remembers these quizzes in the old Yu-Gi-Oh games where you have a situation presented to you, and you have to find lethal, or like a way to win the game? As you already know, I've told most of you already, I did lose round 5 of German Nationals because I misplayed it. I lost and I had a winning line basically and I only saw it like a couple minutes later and I was like disappointed and whatever and I thought why not do a little puzzle so I have recreated the situation as a replay and we're gonna go through it and you guys are gonna see if you would have won the game and gone 5-0 at nationals because I, I did not. I lost the game and this is it. It's game 3 round 5 against Punk Adventure Outlitch 60 card pile. I lost the dice rolling game 1, opened no hand trap so I lost game 1. I won game 2 and in game 3 the opponent is going first and this is my opening hand. I opened Gamma, Nib, Teleport, first appearance and Geek Boy and we're just gonna go through the game and I'm gonna sh tell you when you have to find the key line but let's let's go through I, at this point my hand is pretty good the opponent starts by activating cursed outland paying 800 to grab a conquistador activates a fateful adventure from hand and then activates magician souls by sending the illusion of chaos from the deck to the graveyard I am 100% convinced that you have to gamma this and I did because there's four cards in their hand you already know two are magician souls and conquistador and I think you have to you have to gamma this magician souls you can't let them draw two cards by sending the cursed outland and the conquistador to the grave I think I, I gamma it because at this point it was very very it was very clear they didn't have right of Aramis here. So letting them draw two to find the right of Aramis here just didn't seem great. Also, because they didn't have right of Aramis here, I was very very sure that I could nip them regardless. I didn't think I needed a hand trap negation for Barone or anything to to get the nip through. So I decided to gamma this magician souls, which I still think is correct. I don't I, this is not the mistake that I meant. The magician souls goes to the graveyard. Unfortunately, one of their cards in hand, which we already knew they didn't have Rite of Ramesir, here, but one of their cards was Teleport. They did have Teleport, they went Zeamin, they got the Fateful Search for Breko back. Also, they went Zeamin, go search Foxy Tune, use the Foxy Tune, discard the Conquistador, summon the Deer Nut, make the Chaos Ruler, uh, trigger both, trigger both, bring back Zeamin. At this point, I don't remember exactly what they milled, but what I do know is that they did not hit any light or dark they didn't add anything to their hand and there was nothing relevant like an outlet trap they definitely hit jet synchron but that's why in this replay i just picked four spells and traps i think there were like monsters in there maybe like ash or something but there was nothing important it was definitely only these four the four didn't matter uh, and one jet synchron that mattered so we continue they made hulk they summoned red rose dragon they used the fateful to grab enchantress Discard Enchantress, Banish Enchantress, Grab Right, Activate Right, Get Token, and I, at this point, I decided to nib, which I think that's questionable. The reason I decided to nib here was because I didn't want them to send Snow, because I knew they run Snow, and I felt like my hand can deal with one Hot Red, because from my perspective right now, their end board, if I nib here, is probably going to be Hot Red only, and my hand can be the Hot Red, right? And so that's why I decided to nib here. The thing is, they did punish me for this, but that was my logic. I felt like they get to Snow for free if I don't nib here, and they only end on Hot Red, then I can beat the Hot Red, but I think I should have waited, but it's whatever. I had a winning line even with nibbing here so that's fine the line that i did not see that is very very cool for them i'll show you right now they did go jet synchron discard the draco back make lina bring back my gamma bring back chaos ruler and make baron this is a line this this was very good of them i did not see that possibility i forgot about lina i thought they would just make hot red and i would get to keep my nibiru on the field honestly my bad as well i should have seen that i should have waited with the nib i should have let them have snow and nib them even later but okay my mistake it doesn't matter they go to end phase after they activate conquistador to bring the sanguine my draw is 
Diviner of the Herald. Very good draw. I start with Teleport because I have to basically know if they're going to negate Teleport because my line of play is very strong if they negate Teleport. Like, I can't Teleport for Geek Boy because I already have Geek Boy and First Appearance, so I'm probably just going to Teleport for Ghost Ogre anyway, so I try to bait the Baron because I think in this format, Teleport looks stronger than it actually is in this spot. They ended up not negating it, though. I end up summoning the Ghost Ogre just because in case, like, at, at this point in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're definitely gonna Barone the Diviner, so I, I'm gonna need a Tuner, right? I'm gonna, like, first appearance for the Ritual, special Geek Boy, and then have a Tuner for a Hulk line or something. What ended up happening, though, which is something that surprised me, they did end up negating the uh, first appearance, which... I was like very happy about because at this point I knew I knew the back row right and the card in hand was unknown but I knew if the diviner goes through I win the game right if the diviner sends herald I search a ritual I win the game 100% uh, surely enough the diviner gets normal summoned activated and they have a veiler as the last card in hand this is the spot where the quiz starts okay the puzzle the puzzle starts here chat there is a winning line right here and I did not find it this is the extra deck you're working with. We play two Herald, Wander Magician, Barone the Fleur, Psychic and Punisher, Linguribo, Relinquished Anima, Cross Sheep, Halka Fibrax, Dagda, Dark, Lina, Selene, Axis Coat, and Entis. This is the opponent's graveyard. So the monsters we can summon at this point, Halka Fibrax, Lina, Dagda, and I think technically we can also summon Cross Sheep. I think I'm just gonna make a poll. Okay, Lina wins, and I'll show you in a second if that was correct. Okay, so. We linked them off for the winning line, and it is Lina. Lina would have been correct, and I'll tell you right now, I summoned Hulk. There's no Ogre in deck anymore. Ogre is already done. I only play one. Uh, I summoned Lina. The only target, I think, was a Veiler. You can bring back Veiler. Now, chat, what do you do now? Because now is the most crucial part. Crash Lina, crash Lina, crash Lina. Yep, you, you guys are smarter than I am. You know the reason why? Normal Geek? We can't Normal Geek, we Normal Summon Diviner. I'll show you the play. The play is go the battle phase, crash Lina. Because Lina, when it dies, obviously you add a light monster from your deck with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. I did not know you could add Benton. I did not know. It's my. It's because I didn't test enough with the deck. It has never come up for me before. I thought Benton was 1600 defense in that situation. I did not see it. Why not Lina in Lina? Because they will search an effect Veiler if you do that. And that's gonna ruin your day in main phase 2. So you're crashing the Lina. You get Benten because it's exactly 1500 defense, which I did I did not think of it at the time, which is very much my bad. You go to main phase two. The line from here on out is still interesting because it's it's still like a little bit of a puzzle here because there's some special things you need to do. But like of course from here you go super crazy. You go special geek boy, search first appearance. You can't activate that again because the activation was negated. You get fire. You special fire. Add doom broker. And now what do we do now? Because now is also pretty cool. What do we make? Yep, okay. I'm seeing some people saying it. Okay, we go. We go Lingaribo. And we make Dark. Very cool. Very cool. Rose Dragon back. Make a Hulk of Firebrax with both the monsters. Bring out Jet Synchron. Because at this point, we're in main phase 2. We can't clear the board, so obviously we're going to go for an Axis Code Talker line. You have to be worried about the attributes engraved, though. So you make cross sheep with these two because cross sheep is an earth, which you need that for access code in a second. Then you're gonna summon the doom broker into the zone. Here, of course, I don't know what I would have drawn. So I can't say, like you draw two and discard two here with the cross sheep. So you can technically find something better than the viner. I don't know, like you can find like follow up hand traps or whatever, which the line that I'm showing you here is not a thousand percent guaranteed game. If you draw a hand trap though, it pretty much is like any Veiler, any Imperm, any Ash. I think you win the game right away with the cross sheep here. But I obviously don't know what I would have drawn if I had gone this line because I didn't. You draw two with cross sheep. That's what I'm indicating. You draw two, discard two. Then the Doom Broker sets you the trap card to prevent the follow up because they are on zero cards. Then you turn these two into a 4300 Axis Code. Uh, you can't line up because you don't have a Spellcaster engrave, but it doesn't matter. It, the only difference is that the Axis Code is 43 instead of 53, which is never gonna matter in this game, I think. And then you have four pops with Axis Code because you went through Lina, Dark, Hulk and Cross Sheep, so that's four pops. A uh, quick note, I forgot that when making the replay, but the Eldritch player will probably activate the Scarlet right here to prevent you from just popping it. Um, but you definitely pop Barone. 
Uh, this is the moment where I realized you would probably activate the Sanguine, so just whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I, I think what you pop with your other three pops is you pop the Fateful, you pop the uh, Golden Lord, and you pop the Lina last because it can search Mailer. So the situation is the following, right? We pass after doing all this with an Omni Negate into only a Veiler in hand with a Golden Lord in the graveyard. At this point, I think we win the game unless they draw like very specifically. Also keep in mind, we would have drawn two cards with Cross Sheep. Lina can get Nip here. If they play it, yeah, if they play Nib, then it's a different story, but I don't know if they did. I didn't see any Nib in all three games. They might not have been playing it. If they Veiler the Axis Coat now, they I don't think they have outs. Like, I don't think you would Veiler the Axis Coat now. They get Eldritch Engine? Yeah, but we win next turn. Like, our follow-up is so strong. Let's say they draw a hand trap, right? Which they play a lot. Let's say they draw a hand trap like Imperm. What's, what's gonna happen is they're gonna use the cursed Eltland to search, whatever. They're gonna activate um, Golden Lord. We activate this, right? Like, look at our follow-up here. Our follow-up is gonna be so strong. The thing is, maybe I would have still lost the game if they had Nib in the game. Maybe I should have just not popped Lina and, and then negated Lina. Maybe that's, that's a possible play, right? Matter of fact is I did not see the line where Lina can search Benten and I lost 100% because of it. Not like I lose if they play Nibiru or I lose if they draw like an extender or I lose if they do this or that. Like I lost guaranteed because I didn't see it. That's why I think this one is um, interesting. This was not very close to time. We had like 15 minutes or something. It wasn't going to be an issue, I think. I just think it was a cool it was a cool situation that just goes to show that even after all this time I can still improve on things. What I did, I just went Halka Fibrax immediately and I went into Axis Code Talker in main phase one. I popped the board, I attacked for some damage, but not enough. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there is a way to game there in main phase one. I, I think it's a cool thing to look at. And if you if you saw it immediately, the Lina Surge Benten line, then congrats, you you would have probably won the game. I mean, I who knows what would have happened if I've seen it, if I had seen it. Maybe I would have seen it. Maybe I would have won and been 5-0, and uh, the entire tournament could have gone differently. That's how it is sometimes. So yeah, I think that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed it too. And for everyone watching on YouTube, you know, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about the Libromancer deck, about some of the interesting combo lines. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.